we are going to learn Azure AD pod managed identities in AKS. This is the next uh, chapter or next concept in the security that we already talked about. And this is, this is the understanding of, or the concept of pod managed identities before we perform the lab. So we need to understand the flow, how this pod managed identities work in the AKS. So we have covered managed identities many times, and I hope you guys are aware of managed identities. And uh, here we are going to enable managed, ident managed identities on pod. Now, first we need to understand how this will work because pod is running on a virtual machine, right? And if we enable the managed identity on a virtual machine, then what it mean? Like all the pods running on that VM would have the access to the relevant resources. Because pod is not a Azure resource, it is a Kubernetes resource. Azure resource is what? It's a virtual machine. And if we enable the managed identities on the virtual machine, for example, an application is running on a virtual machine, right? Let's let, let me take you through this diagram that I created just to understand. Let's suppose this is our virtual machine and uh, we have managed identity enable on this virtual machine where the application is running. And let's suppose this application needs to access the key vault. Now key vault will, will ask for, you know, either token or if you are accessing by yourself, whether you have the permission or not, the authentication, right? So how actually managed identity work? Well, managed identity works with the help of IMDS, which is Instance Metadata Service, IMDS, which is, which is running on non-routable IP address. Let me write this down, which is 169, dot 254.169.254. You must have seen that IP address somewhere for sure. So this is the IP address of instance metadata service. So what actually happens this uh, managed identity request a token to IMDS and they, it, whenever you enable the managed identity, there is a certificate assigned and this managed identities has the information of IMDS because it's running on a non routable uh, IP address and it will request the token so that it can provide the token to the resource for the authentication purpose. Now IMDS will take this, this certificate which is assigned to this managed identity and show it to Azure AD and in return, it will get a token. It will forward this token to this uh, virtual machine or the managed identity. And this application will utilize this token to access a resource. It's a simple flow, right? Let me write this down here just to re token request, okay? Now, <clears throat> here, uh, oh man. I think I should do this again. Oh, okay. Now here, authentication is happening for a token purpose through the help of CERT that managed identity has. Now, once this is done, of course, AD will, after the authentication of the uh, authentication, AD authenticate the certificate that IMDSA showing, you know, and once it is done, it returns, returns token. And this token will come to, uh, come on, come here by IMDS and this, go here and it will show it here and it will give you the access. That's how uh, this IMDS uh, managed identity flow works. And what if 
going back to the previous question. What if there are multiple pods running, right? Let's suppose these are multiple pods running on this virtual machine, right? So when running multiple pods on a single virtual machine in AKS cluster, let's suppose this is AKS cluster, this VM is the node. By default, each pod can reach to the IMDS endpoint, just like this application. Right, because managed identity is enabled on the virtual machine. Now, what does this mean? This means that each pod could get access to the identity configured for that virtual machine, right? So it will not suffice the purpose because if everybody has that identity, it's not a good thing. So what is there which will take care of the pod managed identity, which will authenticate whether pod has the uh, access or not. So it is more like VM has the managed identities and whether pod has the access to this managed identity or not. So there is something in between which is called a daemon set or node managed identity, NMI. This NMI will verify which identities that pod should have access to. Maybe this part has access to the storage account and this part has the access to the key vault. So this NMI will verify that. And once any NMI is uh, happy or verifies the access, uh, then it will forward the request to the IMDS and rest of the flow will remains the same. So whatever Azure AD returns back, this token will have only info of what this uh, pod has access to, right? So that's how the managed pod identities work. And this is a wonderful feature. And uh, right now it's in preview, it's not uh, GA, but Microsoft is working very hard because this is uh, a revolution in the security of AKS. Nobody, no, no other Kubernetes has this feature. So this will, this will be uh, a wonderful when this feature will become GA. This way you can control which pods on your cluster have access to uh, certain identities, right? And the benefit of using Azure AD pod managed identities as an AKS add-on is that functionality is supported by Microsoft and the software will be updated automatically as a part of regular cluster operations. So uh, this is the concept that we need to understand first and in the next video we'll go through the lab for the pod managed identities we'll try to uh, of course there is a basic basic setup involved in the lab and you know <laughs> the same cluster that I'll be working on on the lab apart from cus cluster will of course we need to enable the managed identities on the cluster and then we'll try to access uh, some actual resource which, which supports managed identities through the pod let's suppose it's a blog let's see in the next video thank you for watching bye bye take care